hello, hello, and welcome into the Red Sox CLNS Roundtable. I am your host, per usual, Nick Qualia, sitting alongside my boy, Adam Blue. Adam, what's up? Not much. Can't believe the season's over. Yeah, pretty solemn day here. Pretty solemn day. Today, we're going to be talking about the Red Sox season, discussing whether or not it's gonna it was a success or a failure. Who's, to, who's the most to blame for the season, I guess you can say? The final question is, John Farrell gone? Three topics we're going to cover, but before we get into it, I have to tell you, like I always do, about the best website to stick your money into. If you have a problem and you just love spending money and you love gambling, you love the thrill, you have to go to FanDuel. Attention, fantasy football fans, the wait is over because football is back, baby, which in turn means FanDuel is back. FanDuel is huge for the fantasy football everyday fans with new contests every single week, which means absolutely no busted seasons. That means zero busted seasons. When I say none, I mean none. It's simple and there is something for everyone with a ton of contests to choose from starting at just one buck. Just pick a contest, choose your team, and watch your score skyrocket in real time. Over 2.5 million players have won a cash prize playing fantasy sports on FanDuel. Sign up today by going to FanDuel.com, click the Join Now button, and use my code RedSoxBeat. All one word, no spaces, baby, Red Sox Beat. If you use that code, you get to try FanDuel for free. That's right, baby. I mean, for absolutely nothing. Not a zero of your cents in your bank account with absolutely no deposit required. Visit FanDuel.com to claim your free contest and play for a share of $10,000. Just sign up using promo code Red Sox Beat. That's FanDuel.com using promo code Red Sox Beat. Void where prohibited. Okay. All right. Well, this weekend I'm going to use FanDuel, but for right now we have to discuss the uh, the issues uh, over the for the Red Sox season. So by now, if you're listening to this, you know the Red Sox failed miserably at home yesterday, being the biggest teases. I can't say the first word I want to say, say, but the biggest teases to Red Sox fans. Red Sox have a 3-2 lead off of an electric Andrew Benintendi two-run shot off of Justin Verlander. Everybody in the crowd's chanting Upton, then they're chanting Justin. We just can't get on the same page, but the place is electric. Chris Sale is pitching his balls off in relief of Rick Porcello. Comes back out for the eighth inning, which I did not expect to see considering Addison Reed was up warming, and he was warm, it seemed like. Chris Sale comes up and gives up a bomb over the monster. Okay? Gives up a bomb over the monster. Locked at three. Craig Kimbrell comes out. Men on base. Let's one man in. Ninth inning. Let's one man in. Rafael Devers hits an inside the park home run. Place lights up again. But you have no faith. You have no faith because the team's offense just isn't there to, to climb back in the playoffs like this. And the Red Sox dropped the final game of the season 5-4, to four, which included another ba- two base running myths with Andrew Benintendi getting uh, thrown out on a line drive uh, back to first base, which he did not make it back to first base in time as there was a line drive out. And Mitch Moreland got thrown out at home once again because that's what the Red Sox did this year. They just kept getting thrown out every single time they went home. It was phenomenal, including Mitch Moreland, who was thrown out Four times this season. Fun little fact. Ball to left field. Henley Ramirez hits a ball to left field. Probably the slowest runner on the team, Mitch Moreland, is on second base. Not even deep left field. Shallow left field. Butterfield sends Moreland. And Moreland gets thrown out by a mile at home plate. Adam, if that doesn't sum up the entire Red Sox season, I don't know what does. Yeah, I I mean... I think it's just it was. I think that whole game was a microcosm of the season. It was just inept managing. It was, you know, they they didn't use the bullpen right at all. They didn't use the bullpen at all. Period. Like, uh, I, I mean, the bullpen's supposed to be the strong suit of this team, and they don't go to Addison Reed in the eighth inning. Like, why? Why did you trade for Addison Reed if you don't use him in the eighth inning of a three-two game? When your season's on the line, why why put Sale back out there? I don't get it. And then why put Kimbrel in? It's just stupid managing. I just wish John Farrell was w- 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 hadn't got thrown out so we could blame him for, for 
being a complete idiot in this in this game. But you know uh, those were his calls. You know those I were know. his he calls. I know. He probably used his Apple Watch and, and from the dugout and was watching on TV and signaled him into De Sarcina. Uh, but it's just a microcosm. They can't. They, they, no, no clutch hitting. I mean, like you said, after Devers hits that inside the park homer, we have no faith. I mean, uh, you had Le- uh, what was it? Uh, Vas- was it Leon or Vasquez? And then Jackie Bradley Jr., who, who I mean, he's my boy, but we all knew he wasn't coming up clutch. And then Pedroia, Christ Almighty, he sucks. Uh, please, uh, what happened to that guy? He got he got old so quick. He's injury prone, and they just need to get rid of him. I mean, I had no faith. I'm like, oh God, Pedroia's up. He's not. We're done. Like no faith whatsoever. And then uh, even if he got on, what was Bogart's gonna do? He did nothing in the series. Oh, absolutely. So, for a guy who's been here for so long, I had no faith in Dustin Pedroia. None. No, you shouldn't have any faith. What has he done? What it was he disgusting. Done since, like, 2013. It was disgusting. You knew he wasn't going to do a thing. You knew he wasn't going to do a thing. And then he teased us by following off some pitches and, and like having a long at bad and, and – and you know it was like a tease. Yeah, but it's he like, does oh, that. He does all, that. He fouls off. He fouls off a ton of balls. Then he rolls over a ball to third base by stretching outside and, and, and leaning for a pitch. He never swings at a pitch right down the middle, and they always throw him a first strike. Always. We'll never swing at that. But he is fine with swinging at an outside pitch when it's three and one. Loves doing it. Loves Ugh. doing it. So Adam, what do you think? Is this season a success or a failure overall? Oh, it's a failure. I don't know how you can. I I don't understand the people that would say it's a success. I mean, yeah, they made the playoffs, but I can think of a like, few people. I, I I can think of a few people as well, but <laughs> I mean, what the hell? The, the freaking Minnesota Twins made the playoffs, and they suck. So I mean, you, the the Red Sox they they were built uh, like the way they're built. They should they should be still playing right now. They should be. I I thought at the beginning of the year, I predicted that beginning of the year they were going to the World Series. So. I get that a lot of guys uh, uh, underachieved this year. Uh, I get that we had some injuries. I mean, obviously, we didn't think that David Price was going to, you know, be in the bullpen and miss a couple months. We didn't we, – oh, God, we didn't think that Doug Fister would be a uh, game three starter and we would re- rely on Doug Fister. We didn't think that Rick Parcell was going to blow this year. Well, actually, I did. Th- I thought he was going to blow. But everybody else didn't think he was going to blow this year. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, there were a lot of reasons why they, they didn't succeed. Um, but I think it's a failure. I mean, my God, I, I'm a Red Sox. You know, as a Red Sox fan, I think we're kind of spoiled. We we think they're going to win the World Series every year. All of a sudden, uh, after 87 years of, of being uh, of disappointing us, now we think they're going to win every year. But on paper, this team was built to they to to be in the World Series. I mean, obviously, if they if they you know want to spend more money and and you know not have to go, uh, oh 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 heaven forbid we go over the luxury tax, but. I mean, I, I don't get how this this season is, isn't a failure. I mean, you're going to get people that are saying, oh, well, they won the division. Like, who cares? Who who cares? What did that get them last year? That got them a sweep. Like, you don't you don't put a banner up for winning the AL East. I'm with you. They Yeah, they absolutely – this season is a failure because you were expected to win the AL East by far. You were expected to win the AL yeah, East. Yeah, barely won. You, you even had some big-time favorites in Vegas to win the World Series. But you guys – Fell so hard on your face. The amount of leadership on this team, or the lack thereof, was staggering. There's leadership, there's none. It that was. Neg- that's like negative leadership. It was staggering, and just the fact that the team just couldn't come together. The offense, it was either it was night and day between between being red hot like they could be sometimes, or ice cold like they were a lot. It was. The season is by far a failure because the team did not even make it past the ALDS. If they made it to the ALCS and had to face off with either the Indians or the Astros and then and then got beat there, we're having a different discussion. But they couldn't they they barely won a game. They barely won a game in the in the ALDS. This is a team that should not yeah, be go. struggling to win games in the ALDS. The only reason you won a game is because you have David Price coming out of the bullpen. Because if David Price starts that game, we're probably seeing the David Price that craps down his leg on the mound at Fenway Park. Oh, come on. Come on. He would have pitched, would have pitched better than, than, than uh, most of your starters. Oh, yeah. Probably a little bit better, but Houston probably would have shelled him because David Price hears everything. But overall, we both think that this season has been a failure, a colossal failure. 
Adam, next big question, though. Is John Farrell back for the 2018 season? Oh. If I mean, if he is back, I might just not 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 root for the Red Sox. But I, 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 I my gut says yes, he's back. I, I don't know. I, I don't understand how that could possibly happen. Uh, I think everyone knows that that you know we need a culture change and the first person to go. You can't get rid of Dombrowski. You can't get rid of John Henry or any any of the ownership. So the first person that that should go is Farrell. But I think that Dombrowski is going to say, well, you know, he's won back to back uh, a- AL East divisions, and and you know nobody's ever done that here. So you know how can we fire him? And we're going to get another year of you know absolute clueless moves. Inept managing, uh, throwing people under the bus. Uh, uh, I, I, oh God. Well, if I my... have to deal with this again, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I might just start. I'm gonna maybe be an Astros fan or, or start rooting for the Nationals or somebody. Maybe a Rays. I, I don't know. No, legit. Like it, it, it was infuriating watching this team this season, and it, it was the little things that ticked you off the most. It was things like running into running into outs on the base paths over and over. Because you saw such little correction in that area, you knew that it was coming from John Farrell. You knew John you knew Farrell was, was not disciplining them. You, you knew, knew John, John Farrell, Farrell was telling them to be aggressive on the base paths like yeah, this. It, and he would defend it all the time. He would defend yeah, it pissed. all the time. He'd get pissed when you asked him about it. Like like it like you were asking him some kind of like you were insulting him when you were asking how come how how come you're how come all these guys are running running into outs? He'd get all pissed off at you, like, oh well, you know, they're being aggressive and you know, we're scoring a lot of runs because of that too. No, you're not. You lost games because you were running yes. into outs on the base paths. Including including not having a man on second and third base or at least first and third base yesterday with two outs, but you gotta take the chance. You gotta take the chance, cause cause Rafael Devers, the guy who just hit a go, who hit a bomb to center field the day before, was coming up after Hanley Ramirez. But instead, you had Mitch Moreland go home. You had Mitch Moreland go home and get thrown out by twenty feet. It wasn't even close, and it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. Because of that, John Farrell has to go, and I think Dombrowski understands that. John Farrell has to go. There has, like you said, there has to be a culture change, and I think there will be a culture change. It starts with the head. It starts with John Farrell. Then it goes to Dustin Bedroya, and then you make a trade, and you make a trade, and you get a power bat for next season, aka John Carlos Stanton. Trade everything for him. I don't care what you have left. I don't care if the Paw Sox are bad for the next twenty-five years. Trade everything <laughs> for him because you need a power bat now. I would literally give them McCoy Stadium if you could send it down there. I will give anything for Giancarlo Stanton. That doesn't cost that. You're not getting much from McCoy. Cause yeah, I know. No, years. I know. It's a nice little ballpark. But you oh, need, yeah, I love it. You need to get a culture change in that clubhouse now. You need a leader who isn't David Price. And it starts with cutting off the head of the snake. The head of the snake is John Farrell. I thought I thought the leader was Dustin Pedroia. Didn't he say that in front of his locker? Like, hey, you're looking for a leader? I'm right here. Yeah, which was pathetic. I thought, I thought it was the little guy, the little leader that everybody loves. He's just like he's just like IT. He's the little guy that everybody loves. What did he lead? Um, he led them into losing in Game Four and led them into being so totally disappointing. And and I I don't know what he led. I, uh, the, before that, when when was the last time you actually heard him stand up and say anything? Exactly, Adam. We got a little over a minute left. Give me your thoughts. Summed up twenty seconds. Final thoughts on the season. Ugh, I can't believe it's over, but I can believe it's over. I, can, I actually couldn't believe they won a game because I, I said the last time that we, we did this round table that they were getting swept, and if it wasn't for David Price, they were getting swept. And I wish they would have gotten swept because we wouldn't have had this cut. Then John Farrell would definitely have to go. But, of course, not only not only did, he, did they win a game, but they can, they can claim that, that he wasn't managing in, in game four. So I think we're going to get stuck with him again. I think, I, and I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do if, if he's the manager again. I am, I, I'm, uh, I'm this so was, aggravated. To me, this was the most unlikable Red Sox team I've seen in a long time. And I hope to God there is a culture change next season because this was, a, this was a team that just did not deserve to win anything. I thought they were going to be swept too, but – Hey, they won a game. I got to go to a playoff game. Got to chant Upton at Justin Verlander, which was awesome. 
All right, everybody, <laughs> thank you for listening to the CLNS Red Sox Roundtable. I guess final one of the season season, but of course we're going to have more over the offseason when, when they get Giancarlo Stanton. Thanks for when, listening, when everybody. When John Farrell gets fired. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great night.